Good day. I am Derek Hogan. I am one of the instructors at North Georgia Technical College in Clarksville, Georgia in the Precision Machining and Manufacturing, CNC Technology, and Twin Dot Programs. Today's video is going to go into a process which I used to deal with a very difficult situation that came up one time. I had to make a metric trapezoidal 8mm two lead screw. This piece was really small in diameter, which caused it to have a lot of flex. So what I had to do is come up with a solution that would allow that. It was too small for traditional follower rest to work with, so I came up with a unique solution that seemed to solve the problem. It actually did a good job of producing the final product. I have a little something I want to show you here today. It's a little tip and trick that I have found that can make a big difference in how much success you have in cutting threads on a small diameter part. It's a rather simple fix. It's something that doesn't take a lot of time. It's not too difficult to do. You can do it using just a drill press if you have to. And, but it does really change the world uh, when it comes to doing this. Now, here I've got a bar, this piece of 3 diameter bar stock. And it's an extremely long piece. I'm trying to need to cut threads on this piece. Well, one of the problems you're gonna run into with this right here is it's gonna have significant flex. We're not talking about a little bit of flex. We're talking about you put just a little bit of pressure here and you start seeing 15, 20 thousandths flex here. Now that's going to give you a nightmare when it comes to threading. You're not going to have any success with that. Well, one of the things you could think of is like, well, I'm going to put a steady a follower rest on here. Well, the problem about doing a follower rest is not every machine has one. Some machines have them, some machines don't. Your machine may have came with one. It may not have came with one. Well, this ideal right here works really well for dealing with a situation where you do not have a follower rest. And how it works is every lathe has these two holes right here. These two holes right here are threaded. Well, you'll have to figure out what size they are. In this case, they were metric, they were 10 millimeter. And once you figure out the size of those, you then can use these holes to go about bolting a plate up here. The plate then will be able to drill, holding the drill in the, drill, in the chuck itself, the plate, and ream it to size. Now you're gonna ream it to the size that this right here would pass through. In this case, I'm going to use an oversized 376 reamer. And that's going to allow me the ability to support this during threading. Now, it does have a limitation. I can't turn with this. I can't turn because the diameter is not, is not going to be able to be changed, unlike I could with a follower rest. But it would allow me to be able to make this a lot better, a lot easier. One thing I did do before I started this all here is I did center drill my piece. So that's gonna be a necessary step here for this to really work successfully. By doing the center drilling, you're able to support the work piece from the end and be able to keep it secure as I extend this further out. I mentioned earlier when I was talking about this about how you can do this on a drill press. And I can do this on a drill press and it'd be a perfectly acceptable part. To do it on a drill press, all I'd have to do is find the center distance of the two holes that I need to run the screws through to bolt this up to the lathe and go drill them on a drill press. Then I could take the piece of stock I'm using and put it on the lathe itself and then drill the hole in the center using the, um, the lathe chuck. Well, that would be a perfectly fine way of doing this piece. You know, it'd work, it'd be functional, but it's not going to necessarily be the most attractive looking part. You just got to shoot a, a piece of plate bolted to the uh, cross side of the machine. Well, I decided to make something a little bit nicer in this situation, so I took and programmed it on our Mazatrol mill using Mazatrol, created the geometry necessary, drew that up in. Um, try to come up with something that's going to be a pretty attractive part but still be functional and that's what it is. I do have further plans for this piece. I do plan to bushing it so that we can do different sizes so you have the ability to um, interchange the bushing to change your, your size for your threaded rod. So that's a future plan I have for this piece. I did also grind it a little bit to flatten it out and also to give it a further, better surface finish. So overall, I'm pretty pleased with how this piece turned out. It took a little bit of time to go about doing it this way. I'm speeding the video up to uh, try to get us through the process a little bit quicker, but it worked. <laughs> Thank you. 
Once you get the piece mounted on the machine, you have to um, drill and ream the hole. Well, like with any drilled hole, you want to do a center drill hole location first. And that center drill is going to help guide the drill bit and keep the drill bit going in a, where it's supposed to be and keep the drill bit point from walking off. So what we did is we clamped the center drill into the lathe chuck itself and then brought the carriage over till we were able to uh, locate us a little start hole. This start hole is going to help guide that drill bit tip in just like it would on a standard drill press or a standard milling machine. It's just a different way of doing the same basic thing that you'd normally be doing. And after we got this done, we would then trade this out for the drill bit that was necessary and then change out for the reamer that's necessary. And these steps will allow us to be able to um, get the hole in the exact location it needs to be and to the exact size it needs to be. One of the questions to ask is how much oversize should I go? In this case right here, we're going with some 375 stock and we had a uh, 376 ringer, so we went one thousandth oversized with that. A little bit more probably would be ideal in that regard, especially when we're running this at high speed to allow for a little bit more thermal expansion. So now what you want to do is we got the drill bit chucked in the chuck and we're going to go about drilling just like we would normally. Now, if this is a bigger drill bit, I probably would want to do a pilot to basically make it where there'd be less tip pressure, which would cause there to be less flex. In this case, we could do this right here as it was. Changed it out for the 376 reamer, and we're going to go about reaming the hole just like you would on a mill or a uh, drill press. Clamp Clamping the reamer into the lathe chuck, this will allow you to hold it just like a drill chuck would normally. And then it's the same as normal uh, reaming would be. Half the speed that you ran it at and then twice the feed. Using a little bit of cutting oil to help guide it in there, help lubricate the cut, help clear the chips. And you're going to ream it just like normal. And this will allow sufficient clearance to be able to um, have your rod pass through this without there being issues with flex. And the last step of setup is to run the rod through. So as you run the rod through, it should clear, it should slide through. If there's resistance, you want to make sure and not use it and open up the hole some more. And here is a picture of our finished setup in the street. Now, before we had about 25 thousandths of push off right here next to the piece. As you can see right now, I'm putting pressure on the piece and I'm getting very little to no flex on the piece. And that very little to no flex is going to make this a whole lot more rigid. You can also see my tool is running relatively close to this right here. This is going to allow me to have really good support. So what I would do next is I would go about setting the machine. In this case, I'm going to cut 16 threads per inch. So I'm going to set it to C1SY on this machine. So I go about setting the gearbox to the right settings. This is on a Harrison lathe, by the way. It's a nice little small machine that we have. It's a great little machine for our students to learn on. Uh, they have pretty simple to operate, pretty simple controls in that regard. So after everything is set, I want to make sure my speed is correct also. Um, so if we begin the speed correct, it's going to allow me to actually cut these threads pretty efficiently. And because I am um, doing a relatively small thread, this would be normally be a pretty high speed, but once again with threading, you're generally running as fast as you feel comfortable with. Now after everything is set up, I can move over to the starting position, bring it in a touch off just like I would normally do, have my compound set to 29 degrees just like I would for normal threads, and that allows me to be able to um, go about cutting this just like I would any existing thread. Uh, you do want to run a little bit of a little bit of cutting oil on the piece just to kind of help provide some lubrication there because you do not have a huge amount of clearance. And I also wouldn't go crazy on my RPM. You know, even if I'm comfortable threading at like say 800 RPMs or something like that, I would not necessarily run it that fast because of the fact you are dealing with you know, limited clearance there. That would create more, more heat to build up. 
So once I get this set up, dialed over to where I want to, gauge my half nut, and it goes about cutting the threads. In this case, before, this would have been a nightmare to try to do. In this case right here, it just goes and cuts like nobody's business. So it just cuts without any push off, any flex, anything at all. This, like I said, would be a complete game changer if you're trying to do a threaded piece like this. And it's a relatively simple piece. It's, like I said, you can make using just a simple drill press. And once my first pass is done, I would go back to the beginning of my piece and start over and do my second pass, just like I would for any standard threading operation. You know, it is good in the situation to, to, you know, take a file and go over the threads, and I'll do that in just here in a second, which will allow me to knock the burrs that are raised by the threading process off the piece. And that there will help it um, decrease the amount of friction that's there. So as we go about cutting these right here, it's a lot easier process. And I'm just going to let this finish out and you get to see some of the different steps here. As you can see here, you know, we're not getting any push off, we're not getting any flex. This is actually a really easy threading process. And, you know, like I said, this will work for threading. It won't work for turning because there is no way to accommodate the change in diameter, unlike you would with a, a standard follower rest. So a follower rest would be better in most situations if you're doing a turning operation. But this works really well for a threading operation if you've got a long rod. Right now we get close to the end, you know, there is no push off. It's just going about cutting the threads, just like it would if you were doing really close to the lathe chuck. So once again, this piece right here is almost complete now. Um, it was made a whole lot easier and a whole lot easier to set up. And to This setup allowed for a very difficult machining process to become substantially easier. You won't always have access to everything that we had here. So, you know, you could do the same thing with a simple plate. A simple plate would work fine for this. But it's a matter of doing what you need to do to get the job done. Once again, I am Derek Hogan. I am with North Georgia Technical College in the CNC Technology 
the program in Clarksville, Georgia. We are working in collaboration with Practical Machinists to produce some educational content. If you have any ideals of anything you'd like to see, please comment and let us know. And also be sure to like and subscribe for more videos.